So Jordan's working. Jordan, who's filming me right now, is using a C300 Mark II and is working with ND filters in order to gain a shallow depth of field. But when we work on a DSLR, uh, for example, I'm on a 1DX Mark II, the downside is that there is no built-in NDs, but creatively we still want to use possibly shallow depth of field for the purposes of storytelling. A way of doing that is to add ND filters on the front of the lens. When we think about adding ND filters on the front of a lens like this, we may be thinking of adding uh, an actual physical screw-in filter, circular screw-in filter that we screw in. The downside is if, like me, you've got many lenses, the, the, the different lenses are not uniform in their size. So this is an 82 thread size. Um, another lens might be a 77, for example. And what that means is that if we were to invest in an ND filter or any other type of filter, a polarizer, an effect that was circular, we would need to buy individual ones for the different lenses. So a more cost-effective way of doing it is actually to buy a filter system. So I'm in London right now. Uh, with all the crazy helicopters and the police going past um, and I want to get a shot that's got a shallow depth of field I could use this leaf filters 100 mil system um, and mount that or place that on the camera so this particular um, filter tray is great because it's got slots for two lenses which oh sorry two filters which means I can stack them I could decide to have an ND and an ND and a grad or an ND and an effect or two NDs and there are many different options and I've also got a kind of a mat box or a kind of a bellow system here which helps me to prevent light from hitting the glass or the lens at the wrong angle um, now the way I would place this filter tray onto the lens is I essentially buy these little screw-in um, plates here, try not to touch the lens, and I would, uh, these little, I can't remember what they're called, these screw systems, they are these rings, these adapter rings, got it, an adapter ring. These adapter rings are really cheap, so I could buy one of these for every single lens, or I could buy one for an 82, one for a 77, and one for something else. Uh, and it's very easy then to change this system from one lens to another or from one camera to another. So quite simply, that's it. And I'm in place. And if I want to release it, I just simply pull the thread at the back or the screw at the back, quick release and off. And on again. Uh, and I would have my filters in there. So if I went from in outdoors to indoors it might be you know what this is like it could be that you shoot uh, weddings and events you want a shallow depth of field outside but if you had a screw in nd can you imagine that you go from outdoors you run indoors and all of a sudden you are massively underexposed if you had a screw system a circular lens or filter you'd have to quickly try and unscrew that that would take time whereas for me i would simply take it off and i would be good to roll indoors so I'm going to try and get a few shots quickly now where I can try and illustrate the benefits of working with a shallow depth of field. So there are different variations with the ND filters. Think of them as being like sunglasses. The higher the number, for example, I've got a 6 or a 0.6 ND here. Uh, and then there's a, there's a 9, uh, ND9 or a 0.9, which is even darker. Uh, so that you can stop down in order to open up the iris. Um, so I find the number system actually very, very confusing. Uh, this number system is not exclusively linked with Lee filters. Um, the way I think of it, so the six, uh, a six ND is essentially two stops and a nine is a three stops. The way I tend to convert it in my mind is that because my camera is set to third of a stop, um, a six means that if I was to take off this filter and get an exposure, there we go, I'm now to get an exposure at f20, all right? If I was to put this on now to get the same exposure, I would essentially move my aperture dial six notches and I would have the same exposure as before. So I, now I go from f20, one, two, three, four, five, six, which takes me to F10, six notches and two stops. <sighs>
All right. Um, so I find that a little bit confusing, but the key principle is, as I am now working at F10 as opposed to being F20, which makes a difference to the overall depth of field. But I really, I want to go even shallower. So here, to get the same exposure I had before, um, I essentially moved to F5 as an F-stop. Um, so we've now moved by combining these two ND filters together from 20 as an f-stop to five much much shallower depth of field now because the sun has moved very slightly in order for me to get a that the exposure that i'm looking for i'm actually going to move my exposure beautiful i'm i'm shooting at f3.2 right i'm shooting at f3.2 with a beautiful shallow depth of field outdoors on a bright sunny day um, and I would still be comfortable moving my shutter speed from 50 to 125, which would give me even greater flexibility in terms of the shallow depth of field. The thing with video is, is there is a restriction in how high you can go in the shutter speed. A photographer, they could shoot at eight with a shutter speed of 8,000, okay. you know, and they could really stop, you know, and get a shallow depth of field so that they're shooting at the 1.2s. It's not an issue, but for us, when we shoot video, we're limited. We may shoot at a shutter speed of 50 and we set it. Our only way of changing our exposure when our ISO is already on 100 or 50 is to shift the aperture. So here, in order to get an exposure, I'm going to take the NDs off, both of them. I am blown to smithereens, all right? I'm going to record this for you so you can see what I see right now. I have a totally blown out shot where the shot is pretty much totally white. I now put these ND filters on the front and I have a shot that's exposed. Let's look at this another way. I'm going to take the ND filters off and in order to get a similar exposure, I'm now going to move and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? I'm now at F18, and I do not necessarily right now want to have F18 for this particular shot. I'm gonna move in front of the camera, right? And you will see what this is like. You are now shooting at F18. You are not benefiting creatively from having a shallow depth of field. I imagine I'm in focus, and so is the background, okay? But now if I was to put this on, it would change the shot. So Jordan's just checking the picture, making sure that you can see the correct thing here. The focus, autofocus is working, shallow depth of field, right? And I move closer and behind should be blurry. Is that right, Jordan? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to take the ND filter off. I am way overexposed. Oops. And here we go. Let's calculate this correctly. One, two, three, four five, six, for my 0 0.6 ND, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, for my 9, 0.9 ND. And then now this should be a similar shot, okay? And the depth of field is probably nowhere near as glorious as what we just had. And that depth of field creatively could make a big difference. Because I've got so many different filters on me today, I'm, I've got a wicked case here from Lee Filters, which just unzips and expands. So if this was on my shoulder, like it should be. There we go. It just opens out. So I'm going to decide what I place in here. So I've got an ND there. So here I have a 0.9 uh, ND. So it's essentially three stops. I could use this ND filter by itself, or I'm going to now use it in combination with the 0 0.6 ND. There we go. So my filter tray here is extremely dirty. It's because they've been to Ghana, it's been to Malta, and I'm going to show you a few shots from those places so that you can get a feel for how these can affect your storytelling from a creative point of view.
Two of my little bag of goodies, I've got uh, grad filters. Now these are slightly different. In this case, this is an ND filter, but it only you see here it's affecting the top half. Here I've got a, a 0.9. Now with a 0.9, I've got uh, dark on the top and clear on the bottom. This is still a beautiful piece of pro glass. Where this comes in really useful is where you need to change the exposure of the sky but leave the bottom of your shot the same. This happens a lot in landscape, landscape photography uh, or here if you were going to get a beautiful establishing shot. Um, it could be landscape or a cityscape like we've got here. Now I'm looking across the bridge, I'm going to step over there in a second and I see a bottom half of the shot that looks reasonably well exposed but because the sun is on the in the sky, I want to be able to stop down just the sky. It's much longer and that's because when I place this filter in, I need to define where I want the grad to stop or to begin uh, and, and end. So I've got this flexibility here to push this up and down which can now allow me to creatively decide where works best. So here I've got a shot at F8 which looks correctly exposed. I'm going to introduce my grad. All right, so as I introduce this now, there we go. So that's without, this is just the ND, and now I'm going to slide in my soft grad, and you'll start to see the sky get darker. Beautiful. It's a bit too far because I've now started to make the bottom of the shot darker. I'm going to get that threshold just right. There we go. So for me, I'm happy with that. I've got a beautiful rich sky with the bottom of the shot correctly exposed. I'm going to make things more difficult now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this particular camera and lens with these filters across the bridge where I've got a much harsher light. Unfortunately, I'm shooting at almost midday sun. So we're not going to get a shot where we've got the sun in the shot, but this will still hopefully help to illustrate the point uh, as to why these uh, grad NDs are so useful. This illustrates the difference between the soft grad and the hard grad. This, they're both um, a 0.9 ND. Yeah, but you can see this is soft and this is hard. So for this scene, I'm now going to try using the hard. So this is now showing the difference between having with the hard grad as well. And the great thing is because this tray rotates, if for some reason my scene was at an angle, I could simply rotate the grad round. It's a bit too far, but there we go. I've got options to line this up in the way that I want to creatively. So hard grad. And then here is a soft grad. So now I'm trying something a little bit different. On the front, I've added an accessory ring. On the front of that, I've added a circular polarizer from Lee Filters. Sometimes you're in a situation where you want to be able to maximize or minimize reflections. It could be you're shooting for a car window or you're shooting uh, internally and there's lots of, I don't know, shiny surfaces. A polarizer can help you to uh, change the amount of reflection that shows in your shot. Uh, another reason that you might decide to use a polarizer is on a day where there is a blue sky, unlike today, uh, if you were to add a polarizer, you can vary the amount of intensity that there is in the blue sky. Um, so that can be uh, extremely useful. All you need to do is rotate the polarizer on the front. Uh, this ring uh, rotates round, uh, or if you're a little bit lazier, then you're able to turn the filter tray. One benefit of adding the polarizer to the front of a tray is because I'm able to add NDs behind. I could add an ND, I could add a, I don't know, a, a grad like we were doing earlier. And um, we would then still have these different options. I've got two slots here where I could put two filters and still have my polarizer. If that was just on the front of the lens, well, those options wouldn't be there. So during the course of this video, hopefully you've seen the benefits of starting to play with a filter system. I've been using the Lee filter system, the 100 mil, uh, and this has given us the creative options of using shallow depth of field to assist your storytelling, to just lift up the production value that you may be able to have. And also, we've also had a try with uh, the polarizer as well. Get out there, have some fun, keep shooting 
and uh, enjoy what you do.